Okay. I'll be there in half an hour. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Ah, it's the centre. Mm. We've got one blowing up. Looks like it could come this way. This is Radio 8JR. Before the news, here is a cyclone watch message. Tropical Cyclone Watch Message Number 1, issued at 5.45 a.m. Monday by the Tropical Cyclone Warning Centre. A tropical cyclone watch has been declared for the coastal areas from Palm Rock to Fisherman's Point. At 5.30 a.m., Tropical Cyclone Mani was located 750 kilometres north-northwest of Oceanville, moving south-southwest at 12 kilometres per hour. Gales are not expected on the coast within 24 hours. Communities between Palm Rock and Fisherman's Point should listen to the next advice, which will be issued at 12 noon. The time is now 6 o'clock, and here is the latest news. The Premier last night stated that... Yes, I've got them right here, love. Uh-huh. I'll send him over immediately. Bye. Richard? Richard? Hi, Mum. Hello. This is Kirsty. She and her mother have just moved up here from the south. Hello, Mrs. McLeod. Our neighbour told us to contact you about the cyclone. We've never been in the cyclone area before and don't have a clue about what to do. <laughs> Actually, your neighbour's already contacted me and I've arranged to meet your mother this morning. <laughs> don't you worry. Uh, Richard, would you take Dad's glasses over to the bureau? He forgot them in the rush this morning. And hurry back, dear. You've got a lot to do this morning. OK, Mum. Bye. Want to go for a drive? I can show you how they track a cyclone. Dad's director of the Weather Bureau. Cyclone, eh? Oh. This is Billy. He's just moved up here as well. G'day, Kirsty. Hi, Billy. Oh, you've met. Where are you going? I'm taking Kirsty to see the Weather Bureau. You don't want to go there, do you? Come on, I'll take you down to the beach. You can check me surfing. What about the cyclone? When did the weatherman ever get it right? Anyway, cyclones are nothing. Don't listen to him, Kirsty. You admitted the other day you didn't even know what a cyclone was. I guess I'd better take it seriously. My forecast is for really small waves at the beach today. Hi, Claire. Hi. Hello, Richard. Hi. Hello. This looks like an adding machine. It's an SIR. Well, that's a satellite image recorder. Sitting above Australia in space is a satellite loaded with cameras. And every few hours it transmits a picture of Australia back to us here. And this machine receives and prints a photograph. It's the weather station's advanced guard in observing local weather conditions and checking on the appearance of new phenomena, like cyclones. How would you do that? Well. This photograph here shows up cloud formations, and this is what a cyclone looks like from space. Now, with photographs like this arriving at regular intervals, the difference in the cloud position tell us weather trends. The picture after this one would show us the cyclone's new position and the difference of its direction and speed. Dad keeps telling me, though, that to be a good weatherman, you've got to stay a jump ahead of the weather. You see, photographs lack vital information, like air pressures and temperatures. And we get this information from boats and planes passing through the areas and from automatic weather stations, like this, situated on islands around Australia's coast. They transmit information to us about their local weather conditions every three hours. And by putting together all the different facts, we get a picture of the weather and are able to make a likely prediction of its next move. Good day, Dad. Hello, Richard. This is Kirsty. Hello, Mr. McLeod. Hello, Kirsty. Um, make sure there's nothing lying around the lawn, eh? Oh, and tell Mum I'll try to get home for a few hours tonight. You know what to do. Sure, Dad. Here are your glasses. Oh, I'll try. Can I show uh, Kirsty the radar room? Sure, if she's interested. Uh, but be quick, though, and don't get in anyone's way, eh? Right. See you later, son. Bye, Dad. Bye, Kirsty. Goodbye, Mr. McLeod. This is where the information is recorded. Of course, it's not. As simple as just recording information. How's that? Because weather is like a wild animal. It's not clockwork. And a cyclone is especially apt to do anything that comes into its head. 
See this cyclone here? It's well out of the range of the radar on the coast. And as a result, the prediction of its location and movement isn't as accurate. <laughs> I don't want to paint things black. It's just that, well, things can happen out there that we have no way of knowing about until after they show on the instruments. G'day, Ken. Hi. And when a cyclone enters radar cover, we can track its position and pinpoint it dead on. But just because we've got it covered doesn't mean we can control its movement. It can still change its mind. But if it does cross over the coast and stays there, we can find out exactly where it is. But total accuracy is only measured in hours, so that's why everyone has to be so well prepared. It's incredible. This is the Tropical Cyclone Warning Center. It collects all the current information about the cyclone and passes it on to radio and TV, to shipping and aviation, and to the SES. SES? Hmm. State Emergency Service. It helps the state counter disaster organization, and its volunteers are trained to help people and communities prepare for and cope with things like cyclones. I know a cyclone's a violent storm. What is a cyclone? Oh, well, what you most need is a really warm ocean. You know, like the Timor in summer. The sea heats up a tall column of hot air, and the wind spirals around it faster and faster, like a giant whirlwind. The hot center, called the eye, remains dead calm, with those winds around it. And of course, it generates buckets of rain. If conditions remain right, the whole system begins to move. And like I told you, in the most unpredictable way, if it does cross over land and stays there, well, it pretty soon collapses and dies. What does it feel like? You just might be finding out soon. Those winds can rip trees right out of the ground. Hey, don't look so scared. We've been through it before and we're very organized and prepared. How do we know our homes are safe? Well, there's an SES member down the road. He'll give you a hand to see that the houses are safe. Well, look. I'll ask Mum if she'll ask him to check your house over, okay? And if it's not safe, well, he'll tell her what to do. This is Tropical Cyclone Watch Message Number Two, issued 12 noon Monday by the Tropical Cyclone Warning Centre. A tropical cyclone watch has been declared for the coastal areas from Palm Rock to Fisherman's Point. Still a watch? A what? A watch message. That means that the cyclone isn't expected to get here within 24 hours. When it becomes a warning message, though, it means the cyclone could get here within the next 24 hours. Good day, Mum. Have a good time with boring old Brainy. Interesting. Why don't you come on over and listen to some real good music? <laughs> Kirsty, I was speaking to your mother a while ago. She's expecting you home now. I believe your parents are away, Billy. Yeah, they're down south. Well, then, you read these pamphlets. They'll tell you what to do about the cyclone. If you have any problems, see me. Come on, Mr. McLeod. You've got some work to do. Come on, don't you want to hear some music? Look, I'd better go. See you later, Billy. Bloody cyclone. Bet there won't even be one. G'day, Mrs. Smith. I've come to help you get ready. Bless you, Richard. Now, where do you want to start? Cyclone warning number one for coastal areas from Palm Rock to Fisherman's Point issued at 2 p.m. Monday by the Tropical Cyclone Warning Center. At 1 p.m., Tropical Cyclone Marnie, with central pressure of below 985 millibars, was located 670 kilometers.
Yes, we'll be right. Unless the cyclone comes right over the town. We've cleared the garden of objects. We've got plenty of food. Cars full of petrol. The cat! The cat! We've got to find the cat! Calm down, Kirsty. The cat's sitting at your feet. <laughs> Why don't you come in for a cup of tea, Jim? No, thanks. I've too much to do. Oh, don't complain. As local SES controller, this is what you've been working for. I'm not complaining, and the plan is working perfectly. I'm just checking all the sections. Now, your area, welfare. Everything's ready. Volunteer groups. OK. Welfare centres. All fully equipped. Medical supplies, food, sanitation equipment. Everything's ready. Information centre. On standby. No problems. Uh. Just one, actually. There's a teenage boy just opposite. He and his family have recently arrived in the area. His parents are away and uh, he doesn't seem to be responding to the warnings. I'll go and see him. Mm -hmm. Car 12, this is base, over. Base, this is car 12. Send over. Jim, Cyclone Marnie is veering away and the warning has been changed to a watch. It is still moving along the coast, so everyone should remain prepared until it is definitely passed. Over. Roger, Kathy. Thanks. That's great news. Over. Car 12, this is out. I think I will have that cup of tea now. Good. Here's the latest on Cyclone Marnie from the Tropical Cyclone Warning Center. The Tropical Cyclone Warning for Marnie has now been downgraded to a tropical cyclone watch for coastal areas from Shelley Bay to Fisherman's Point. Marnie has now been downgraded to a tropical cyclone watch for coastal areas from Ship. So you've heard the good news then? It's now on the radio. Mum says, would you like to come over for a cuppa? Oh, I'd love one, Richard. We can now expose the fact that we're actors in a film about cyclones. What we've been doing has been an exercise to see how ready we and you are to face this season's cyclones. With us this afternoon are two men dedicated to facilitate this preparedness. Ray Wilkie, Regional Director of the Bureau of Meteorology, and Kevin Whiting, Director of the State Emergency Service. They've agreed to analyse our exercise and offer us their advice. On the whole, the community was well prepared. However, we did have the case of the two recently arrived families and they did not have the necessary information nor understood what cyclones was about. It's far too late when a cyclone is imminent to start wondering what you should do. You must be fully aware of the counter disaster plan that is uh, prepared locally and be aware of evacuation routes, those things that you require to uh, deal with floods, and most of all, of course, is listen to your radio so you can hear the instructions that are coming across. We live with cyclones. We've experienced them in the past, and we no doubt will experience them again in the future. Now, even though Richard's explanation was uh, fair, it was rather incomplete. Richard should have actually emphasised the fact that a cyclone really is a vicious whirlpool of air with perhaps the energy of 200 uh, atom bombs. And at very close to the centre of this cyclone, we have violent winds that not only can pick up trees, as Richard said, but also smash them into matchsticks. And that uh, if houses haven't been constructed properly and uh, cyclones should hit them, well, they too will be damaged or even destroyed. 
Other uh, points that Richard did raise was the rainfall. Fair enough, uh, heavy rain. But again, he didn't emphasise the fact that this can cause major flooding in streams. Again, a big danger to life and property. And perhaps the most important thing that he didn't bring out was the fact that uh, the storm surge uh, accompanies cyclones as they're about to hit the coast. Now, the storm surge is a general uplifting of the whole area of the, uh, the water, even as high as five metres or more, and this uh, water can crash back into low-lying areas on the foreshores. To me, Billy uh, appeared to be a carefree, almost irresponsible young fellow who lived for the moment, um, took the attitude that uh, if an event were to occur, that just couldn't happen to him. I'm sure that Billy would have learnt a lot about cyclones um, had he asked Kirsty what she had found uh, out when she went through the Bureau with Richard. So I'm sure Kirsty would have uh, told Billy that the Tropical Cyclone Watch messages are issued every six hours to the mass media for dissemination to the people, and that cyclone warnings proper are issued every three hours or perhaps hourly, depending upon how close the cyclone is to the coast. In the film, we saw Billy uh, nonchalantly doing a dance on his surfboard, then walking off as though it was just left there for the wind to carry it away and do some damage. Uh, the fact, too, that he threw the instructions in the rubbish bin in itself was, was enough to criticise him on. But not only did he do that, he just threw the lid on the ground again to become perhaps a dangerous flying missile. Hundreds of thousands of people live in tropical Australia coastal areas that are frequented by cyclones and they've learned to live with these by carrying out the instructions of the appropriate authority, that is the Bureau of Meteorology and the state's emergency services. So why can't Billy? Cyclones are unpredictable. Because of this, people have to be doubly prepared. In each community, there is a local branch of the state emergency service which assists in the formulation and implementation of counter-disaster plans. If people want further information on cyclones, they should contact the regional offices of the Bureau of Meteorology and the State Emergency Service in each state. Hey, Kirsty, you want to go to the beach now? Why don't the three of us go? I figured on that. <laughs> Tropical cyclones are the greatest storms on Earth, releasing in one day as much condensation heat energy as up to 420 megaton hydrogen bombs. Every cyclone is dangerous and must be treated as a real threat until the danger has passed. Where tropical cyclones are concerned, there is no such thing as false alarm. The well-prepared community which has been bypassed by a cyclone knows it has been lucky this time.